Good morning. This is Andres Monson. Uh, welcome to the final iteration showcase prior to go live on the blockchain for asset management inventory. I'll start by, by uh, sharing my screen of the animated video. Some of you have seen it already and provided uh, valuable feedback that we have incorporated with the story of this minimum viable product. Then Brian Arthur will tell us more about this 12 week journey and specifically about this sixth iteration user stories, followed by the actual demo by development team led by Mohan Venkataraman. This is Andres Monson, client manager and agile champion. Today, I'll give you a view on what global asset management is doing with blockchain. Blockchain for asset management is all about securely transfer assets within a business network. An asset could be a physical one like a hardware server, a network equipment or a laptop, or intangible, like a software license. As you transfer these assets across your business network, it's not just within the enterprise. It could be all the way from your supplier to your manufacturer to your distribution network and all the way to the final client. And what we get with blockchain is this shared ledger capability, which means we get full visibility from end to end into that business network. Our approach to build a first minimal viable product client inventory asset management blockchain was to conduct a design thinking workshop with the intended outcome of building an application to implement a shadow chain as a basis for full production application. Instead of attempting a moonshot of immediately redoing all of our processes, we'll use a shadow chain to record key events across our processes and help avoid unnecessary delays, for example, due to transaction settlement time. A shadow chain enriches an existing business process rather than replacing the primary business model completely. We started by identifying current asset management industry pain points. Typically, information about an asset transfers through its life cycle is split among many different systems, conflicting data repository schemas, slow, complex, and fragmented process designs. No one has a clear view of the entire transactional updates throughout a given asset's lifecycle and associated contracts. All this complexity can lead to data quality issues, large amount of discrepancies and long cycle times to resolve those discrepancies. We designed a 12-week total of six iterations to tackle the hills to build a blockchain for a manufactured asset from serialization until the asset is deployed on the floor. The scope was limited to assets that are IBM owned as a final state, excluding assets sold to clients, and focuses only on five key events as the basis to work on future hills, manufacturing serialization of assets to initiate the blockchain, the received and validation of an asset, asset capitalization, warranty activation, and installation on the designated floor space. The first MVP personas are limited to IBM US Manufacturing, America's Logistics, Global Fixed Asset and Hardware Asset Analyst, Asset Management Administrators, and users of asset information. Here is a sample screen that illustrates shadow chain benefits. By recording key events in the asset blockchain record, for example, serialization, and as soon as it is shipped, triggering global fixed asset process and record capitalization, settlement transaction will be reduced. All of these events have a common hash proof we are keeping in the blockchain. By providing an immutable, non-reputable version of each asset transaction, we'll improve transaction settlement time, which for some processes can take up to 30 or even 90 days, improve many key operational parameters, reduce number of discrepancies, and time to resolve them. Future MVPs should include heels and software license management and optimization usage from IBM and third-party vendors and manufacturers, creating a comprehensive record of transactions combining data cutting across disconnected databases of suppliers, manufacturers, shippers, clients, and IBM. And when we link to that end-to-end -end shared ledgering, the ability to embed business rules and business logic with smart contracts, then we really start to see a way in the future where we can increase visibility, increase transparency, and auditability. And probably more importantly for the future, be able to re-engineer our business process fundamentally, because by having a shared ledger, we drive trust, openness, and this visibility and integrity that really is fundamental to the way we are going to operate and interact in the future.
right. Well, I think that concludes the video. Um, once again, nice job, Andres. Uh, this has gone through, uh, I think, several iterations upon itself with uh, a lot of feedback that we've been getting from different types of users. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that will continue and that'll just help us perfect uh, the, our, the final video that will be eventually used, uh, perhaps uh, we're told up to the uh, CEO level. Um, and perhaps maybe something in the future we could use with uh, some client partnerships. Uh, as the video explained here, guys, um, the 12-week uh, the iteration consisting of six sprint cycles is actually coming to a close. Our first MVP project is uh, wrapping up this week, and uh, you can see here that we're planning to implement the shadow process, the shadow chain process, starting early next week. Many of you uh, that I see here on this call have been um, a part of some of the planning and preparation meetings we've had over the last couple of weeks, and uh, we're very excited about that. Um, I'm not going to read through all these details in particular here, but this is just to kind of remind ourselves again, uh, as the video had already done, as to what our MVP scope is, um, and we're mostly focused on the, uh, uh, the interactions and the business network first with uh, the the birth of the asset, which is from a manufacturing perspective, uh, the serialization of that, and then the shipping to our uh, logistics and receiving sites. Uh, from there, there's a lot of validations that occur, and then even further downstream, there's some additional validations from a capitalization standpoint, warranty registration, and so on and so forth. Um, but the purpose of this MVP is really to uh, help us uh, begin testing this technology and, and building a foundation uh, for new things, uh, the new way of uh, providing asset management services. Uh, we certainly see that uh, very helpful for us within IBM and something we look forward to take uh, and starting to partner with our clients here very soon. Um, just a quick recap of the last previous uh, sprint cycles, just to kind of show where we've come from and where we're going next. Um, in sprint number four, we did a lot of that integration and discussion with the manufacturing teams. Um, and to date, I think we've uh, had a lot of good feedback already that suggests that uh, what used to be a very difficult time of getting that visibility and transparency in place, uh, even within our own IBM company, has now become very transparent. Um, the speed of access to the data is, is just unmatched with anything else we've done in the past within asset management. Uh, as well, the, uh, the data quality, the trust in the data quality is one of the biggest pain points that we and the rest of the industry have experienced um, over the past several decades, really, uh, in regards to the space. So this is so far proving to be very valuable uh, in those two areas that we're really keenly interested in, which is the speed of access and the, uh, the trust in the data quality. Uh, Sprint 5, we began integrating that more with our process touch points. Um, we're going to be talking much more about that as we go forward with the shadow chain process. Um, and the purpose, again, is that we enhance and, and, and enrich the uh, existing processes and tools and systems that we interact with today. Um, and as a further transformation, we'll be begin thinking about how we may need to change our process and uh, change our integrations and, and access to our systems of record uh, when we have this, uh, uh, this, this, this big, beautiful blockchain baby of ours here now, now born. Uh, so Sprint 6 is where we are now. Um, and we uh, are basically tying things all together uh, also with a focus on implementing our shadow IT process. And uh, here momentarily we'll begin uh, giving you a demonstration as to uh, what, uh, what the latest is on that. Let's go to the next slide, thanks. Uh, Sprint six, you can see here there's a total of 13, well actually 12 user stories in one task. Um, uh, and again, these all relate to uh, bringing, bringing everything together so that we can begin implementing this in a shadow chain process. Uh, there are some enhancements for those that have been following to the previous showcase recordings or the live meeting as we're having now. Uh, you'll see there, there are some enhancements that we've made based on the prioritization uh, and the feedback, uh, which is another valuable aspect of running an agile project like this. Uh, we certainly wouldn't be able to develop what we've developed within 12 weeks uh, in the yesteryears of, of the way we do things. Um, so I'm not going to take up much more time here since we're already 13 minutes past. I'll uh, turn it next over to our, um, our, our great partner here with IT people is Mohan. And, uh, and Mohan, take it away. Thank you. I, in fact, appreciate uh, uh, you all driving the slides because then I don't have to move my tablet along with me. So first of all, you know, today is the first day I haven't had coffee 
to be active. Uh, you know, it's because this project is so important for us that, uh, you know, we uh, forewent everything else and focused on making a good show here, and I hope it goes well. One thing I noticed, Brian, in your presentation was that you changed the logo of IBM to include the Bitcoin notation for, for the B. So that is quite interesting. I do not know if it is a standard IBM logo or it's something that you did, but it's quite creative. I can't claim credit, but thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, I'm very happy to have the sixth sprint come to a close and we look forward to many more sprints in the future. Uh, to make this a really wonderful product, not only within IBM, but also to the customers that IBM supports. So in today's showcase, well, you know, what we are going to show is, this is a sequence of events that you will see when the demo actually starts. And I'm not going to go through each one, but the highlights are that we are going to show you a preloaded set of real data that I'm, I know Mary has provided us. The second we are going to show is certain features that we have seen in the past, like pull down, uh, using order ID or shipment ID. Third, the, the third concept that we want to demonstrate is that when we get a JSON file or any kind of file from the supply chain, we actually uh, encrypt it and store it on the blockchain, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a document store. And in fact, when anyone based on their role and permission wants to retrieve this document and view it, they can do that. We also want to demonstrate access permissions. So a user like shipper might log in and uh, we, we want to demonstrate that the shipper cannot in fact change the serial number or any other parameters. A receiver would log in and has the ability to change things like uh, turning the asset to be damaged for return or damaged for repair. Also changing the mismanaged serial numbers. And in the end, we want to show that we can drop documents into an MQ light uh, into the MQ hub. And here we are going to simulate that by having Bharat on a local laptop at home, dropping transactions and Adam receiving it at some other location. But the entire transaction is going through the MQ hub that we have configured on Bluemix. And that is the last one. And finally, we will see whatever was dropped, the whole transaction list associated with that particular asset. So that's going to be the showing sequence, and obviously we welcome comments and criticisms alike because we ultimately want to improve this product for the benefit of all of us. Next slide, please. Now, this is the architecture of Sprint 6. Everything else from the previous sprints remains the same. We have the blockchain on, a, uh, on the Bluemix environment with four peers and a certificate authority service. Uh, we have the user interface on the left side, and the user interface has been enhanced to accommodate features uh, that are very specific to displaying event and event details. You can also see in number six and eight, we replaced the file drop to MQ Lite. Uh, we actually use the MQ Hub within which we use the MQ Lite API, and we simulate dropping files from supply chain into the MQ Lite send pipe, and it is received by the application and the application transforms it and loads it on the blockchain. So that's the full architecture. I'm not going to go through the full details because we covered this in a previous uh, presentation. The next slide, please. This is the complete model of the data that we are storing in terms of the data and the relationships of the asset on the blockchain. I want to go quickly through, and you can see that we store asset as our primary uh, object here and we store the asset, its metadata, its relationship to an order, its identifier, the transactions that are associated with the asset, the events that are in the life cycle of the asset, this change, the current state of the asset in terms of where it is, uh, what state it is in, and combine together all these asset states, we have the life cycle. So this data model is what we have on the back end, and the attributes that support this data model will be on the next slide. Please go to the next slide. Yes, thank you. And in this slide, what we show is the attributes that we are capturing and storing on the blockchain. These attributes were arrived at us with joint discussion between uh, some of the users and our team. What we see is those attributes in black are actually being captured. 
those that are in blue are calculated and created by the blockchain uh, chain code, and those that are in red have actually been provisioned for a future use. So we wanted to look at this project as not ending today, but something that can be expanded in future. So that is, uh, uh, this is the data model that represents that goal. And going to the next slide, these are the event states that we today capture about an asset. We can see that from the time the asset is born in, in a manufacturing plant, it gets serialized, it gets shipped, it is received by someone at the customer location, it gets installed. Uh, there is a possibility that when it is received, it is returned uh, as damaged or it is returned for repair. And finally, there are a lot of hops in the life of the asset. It could be sold to some other customer, it could be uh, it could be enhanced by adding additional software or additional hardware, but finally it ends up disposed. So that's kind of the asset life cycle we want to capture on the blockchain. We've demonstrated a lot of this in the demo that we will see. The next slide, please. Okay, those, these are open items, and I have to apologize that always when we think that we can do everything within the six weeks, there's always something left over. In, in software development, I've never come across anybody who says, the project is done. And it is the same case with us. We, we have the open item of doing a full flawless recording, which we plan tomorrow, uh, complete the remaining two training videos. So Adam is going to demonstrate today one of the videos, but we have a goal of three videos that we have to complete. Uh, the Blue Mix deployment, we actually faced a lot of issues last night in terms of the availability and the flakiness of the Blue Mix environment. But in spite of those odds, we were able to deploy the complete software on the test environment. Our goal today is to make sure we can test it and make sure that all the pieces that we have coded run. Then we also want to test with Jim Walters the real MQ light integration between manufacturing and the production environment of, of the asset management application on Bluemix. That is spending, the, the, the challenge there is how do we cross the hops in terms of the red zone, the blue zone, and the other security zones that IBM has between internal systems to the public blue mix. We also have other issues which are very minor to fix. It is, we started with the JSON format that we assumed would be the right format, and then we have a version that we got from Jim. We want to align one of our assumed versions with the correct uh, standardized version that we believe will be the Jim version, and make sure across the application, we use one standard version of the file. And the last one is, in this showcase, what you would see is certain fields are exposed. They're intentionally exposed to create awareness to the users and also for enabling some discussion as to whether in future we should show this or hide this or do we need more. So these are open items and I think we can close this off very quickly, but I do want to highlight that our MVP still has some open items. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Adam uh, to share his screen and run the demo. Yeah, Adam, you, you can take control. All right, guys, um, just uh, booting up my screen here. Okay. Uh, how does that look to everybody? Can you see the, uh, the demo? Yes. Okay, great. All right, um, so uh, this is our, uh, our updated uh, UI. Um, we've, we've gone ahead and um, um, uh, made some graphical improvements, um, and then obviously all of the functional improvements that uh, Mohan just uh, spoke to. Um, so we'll jump right in here. This is uh, the opening login screen, and I'm just gonna log in as, as the admin user right now to give us uh, full access. And so this brings us to a pre-populated uh, list of uh, real assets uh, with uh, the real uh, metadata uh, that was provided by Mary. Um, and so you see here, we've got uh, a list of uh, um, 15, uh, 10, 15 assets here um, with the ability to, uh, in this list, we have the ability to not just view all the assets in the system, but sort those by uh, order ID and shipment ID. And so if we look at all of our orders here, uh, these are our order numbers. And if we pull up one of them, 
we see that we have uh, three assets in this order. And I will get, uh, uh, get to the concept of, of good and bad later as we, uh, as we speak to the receiver receiving and managing those assets. Um, but initially here, you can see in our asset list, we've got um, assets that are indicated as, as clear, good, and then some that indicate that they have a problem. And for each order and each shipment, um, we have the, uh, the, the analytics bar here that, that gives us that overview as well. And so what we'll do here to start out is that we're going to uh, create an asset and uh, through a mechanism where we can upload a JSON file. Um, this is the JSON file that was provided by Jim, uh, the format. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and select this. And we will upload this to the system. And you see over in the left hand side, our new asset has been created. So this asset is brought in through the system and it was received uh, with uh, the indication that it has been shipped. And you'll see here that each event has um, the hash uh, for the document that we are storing uh, for that. So we have the, the proof there. Um, and when we decrypt um, and compare those files, um, as they're stored and when we load them back up, uh, we'll know that uh, no uh, manipulation has been done. And so we can take a look at one of these uh, by clicking on the view supporting document. And right now this is popping up what we are storing. Obviously in, in a production environment, these would be uh, true um, uh, documents that are stored in the system. But right now we are simulating that storage of documents um, uh, full, full on with, uh, with a hash decrypt and encrypt um, support there. So we are simply uh, utilizing our JSON files as those uh, supporting documents. In the future, those could be multiple documents and multiple different file formats, examples, et cetera. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign out and I'm going to log back in as a shipper persona to illustrate the fact that we have some restrictions in the system. And so if we pull up uh, our asset that we created, um, any of these assets we can look at. Um, and one of them here is in the ship state. And we, as you notice, it's in the ship state, um, but we don't have the ability uh, to receive this asset and indicate that the serial number is problematic or that it was received as damaged. Um, that's because we are logged in currently as the shipper. Uh, the receiver is the one that has uh, that permission. So what I'll do is I'll sign out and I'll sign in as a, a shipper persona or as a receiver rather. And so now when we pull up that asset, you'll see that we have the ability to manage this asset as a receiver, indicate that the serial number is mismatched or there has been damage. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, mark uh, one of these assets as uh, damaged. Um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do this one. And so we're gonna say that this asset here uh, is damaged and returned. And we'll go ahead and save that. And when you see uh, we have the returned data here, uh, event processed, and now our current update is, is returned. 
And so we can do the same thing here to a different asset, but um, we're gonna label this as ready for repair. And when you look here, we've got the asset now as under repair um, and the, all of the associated uh, details with that. Um, and so if we go ahead and we go back, uh, we saw this early on, but here is where we get into the analytics of orders and shipments. Um, so if we go ahead and look at one of these orders, we can click on the order number here. You see that this order number matches that one. So as before we clicked on it here, what I'm going to do is illustrate that we can click on it also here. So if we're in an asset, we can see all of the other assets in that order simply by clicking on this. We only have the one in here. Um, it was a problematic order. Uh, that one asset in that order um, has been flagged and marked as a problem. Um, and just to illustrate again, um, I know this order has multiple assets in it. <clears throat> and this order has four assets, three of them are clear, and one of them is problematic. So that gives you an indication here of what these bullets next to the assets mean and what this bar represents. And so in our global asset list, you see that we have the same indicators here um, as problematic or cleared. And so what we're going to do now is uh, do one more uh, finally, and that is for our asset um, here that has been um, shipped um, and we have a problem with it. Our serial number was mismatched. And so what we're going to do is open this up and type in the proper serial number. And so those first few characters we're going to say were, uh, were incorrect. Um, we'll go ahead and save this. And what you see now is the new asset has been created uh, and the old one has been disposed. And so um, we have our related serial numbers here. Our original asset of 00B5027 um, is the original and incorrect. And this is our new one that has pulled over all of the metadata, obviously, except for the serial number. And so if we wanna pull up that other one, uh, we can do that. And we see that uh, we have a related serial number of the new and correct serial number, but you'll see we have uh, um, set this to a, a serial number mismatched event. All right, so we've got our new asset, um, the 78B5027, and what I'm gonna do is uh, log out, make sure I'm in here as admin so we don't miss anything. And uh, pull up this asset, and now we're going to see um, uh, Baroth is going to run uh, the MQ light um, and send simulate a, a full life cycle of, uh, of this asset itself, and we'll be able to uh, see those updates um, when they are complete. Uh, so Baroth, if you wanna go ahead and do that. Yeah, Adam, thank you. Uh, so I'm gonna simulate the uh, full life cycle of the asset that was reported as uh, a serial number mismatch, and it, when it was corrected as 78B5027. And so right now uh, the MQ uh, light is um, waiting and uh, listening for uh, the events uh, documents uh, to be um, uh, applied. And so I have sent uh, the request for uh, uh, changing the asset from capitalized or shipped state to a received state. If you can check that Adam. Yep, and so now we see upon uh, loading of this asset, we see that it has moved to the receive state um, with the associated uh, information with it. 
And now I've sent a request via the MQ uh, light uh, to uh, change this asset to install state. And there you see, we have uh, installed state and it has, uh, uh, our contract has run um, and it has moved uh, past installed uh, to under warranty event. Um, and so now we know that that asset is uh, received, installed and under warranty. And so that, uh, that wraps up our functionality here. Um, you've seen the, uh, the asset uh, get, uh, get created, um, the concept of sorting uh, via shipping number and order number, um, all of our uh, event uh, details uh, on the asset, um, as well as uh, some modifications and refinement to our uh, user interface. So I'll hand it back over to uh, Brian and Andres now. Okay, well, um, I wanted to ask um, you, Scott, if you would like to add uh, some words, some, some commentary after the presentation and the demo from uh, Mohan, Adam, and the rest of the development team. Yes, definitely, thank you, Andres. I mean, it's been a great journey throughout this MVP. I think we've accomplished something that has not been accomplished before with blockchain. And for anybody watching this, I, I, just, I just encourage you to, to vision this um, because this will not be the end of the blockchain journey. We're going to continue this. Um, IT people has done a wonderful job and look forward to more and more blockchain innovation and attacking more of the process through this. So thank you everybody for everything um, throughout this whole journey. All right, Andres, that's it for me. Thank you. Um, Brian, anything else that you would like to add? Yeah, yeah, a few things. Um, you know what, uh, the, uh, the new UI interface uh, is, is beautiful. Uh, you know, the feedback that I already got uh, by same time from a few folks uh, has suggested that this, this really has come a long way. Um, and in a very short few amount of weeks, really. Um, I, I personally really liked what I see. Um, when, when you guys were demonstrating the, uh, the damaged assets there, you know, whether it's to be returned or if it's going to be kept at that location for under repair, that's, that's, that's reality. Uh, and going through some of the uh, process discussions we've had uh, and, and kind of an example of what we plan to do in implementing a shadow process to our existing processes and, and, and interactions with our systems. Um, but uh, you can see here how already this is going to help us when we implement the shadow process um, the, the next set of discussions are going to be around integrations, which uh, has been a very um, popular topic uh, all throughout this journey here so far with us. Uh, we know we have a lot of systems um, that interact within an overall process just within IBM. Um, and the value here is, as we're going forward is not just ourselves, but the interactions with uh, the entire business network. So that means shipping companies, uh, we've kind of set a standard, if you will, with uh, some of our IBM manufacturing sites. This is a very simple, repeatable model uh, that can be used um, with other manufacturers that are out there as well. And again, it's, um, it's proving that there is much more transparency, much more trust in the data and actions that can be taken as soon as you can see one of these updates that are made. Um, those that are affected by that in the business network uh, can, can begin take immediate action and perhaps even automate that through the integrations that they can do with this blockchain environment. Um, so that's kind of in essence where we're going next um, is we're going to continue focused on enhancing this with more functionality, um, which is really a combination of two things. One is your feedback, guys. Um, <clears throat> as we kind of put more strategy and map our vision, long-term vision to how we want to deploy this uh, coupled with your valuable feedback uh, that helps us uh, set up our future hills and our future user stories that we can begin um, showing, you know, newer and greater things. So this, uh, this demonstration, I think, um, is really certain, certainly beginning to bring this all home for us. I think it's, it's getting a complete picture that's uh, sent out to everybody. And, and already, I think uh, people can start to see the value of uh, what we're trying to accomplish here and how that matches to our long-term vision of uh, really changing how we do asset management services. So great job, guys. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to um, ask a question or a comment? 
Hansa, is it Jose and uh, Brian and Jose? Just wanted to thank you guys for letting us help you guys get to where you're at now. I mean, with Jim's help and and you know, develop a towel and just trying to find the right level of uh, orders and that you guys need it. So uh, call us. You know, we're there to help you uh, get through the next set of iterations. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other comment questions if uh, you probably are on mute so you need to unmute first uh, and just to remind you uh, this recording is going to be uh, placed in the same box folder uh, where the rest of the showcases are I will make sure that all of the invitees uh, get a link to it to the the demonstration and the video and the PowerPoint and if there are no additional comments, questions, then I'll stop the recording. All right.